Trooper Karine Blay became the 117th Canadian soldier killed in the Afghan mission. The latest Canadian to be killed in Afghanistan. 25-year-old sapper Sean David Greenfield died this afternoon. That another Canadian soldier has died of wounds inflicted here in Afghanistan. Well, uh, we're, uh, we're planning for our withdrawal of Canadian troops from Afghanistan in 2011. The position couldn't be clearer. Uh, whether we get asked about it this week or last week or next week, uh, we passed the motion in this parliament in, in uh, 2008, and Canada's military mission will, in Afghanistan will end in 2011. Is, uh, do you see Canadian soldiers being in Afghanistan after 2011? You think it's going to be too much? No, I, no, I, uh, you know, I think the parliamentary resolution we arrived at in, um, in the spring was a good one. Um, you know, I think Canada will have some presence in Afghanistan after 2011. Um, I anticipate it to be more on the development reconstruction side, but, you know, particularly in Kandahar, we will have been by 2011. We will have been in Kandahar which is probably the toughest province in the country for six years, for six years. Um, I think, you know, not only have we done our bit at that point, uh, you know, I think our goal has to be, after six years, to see the government of Afghanistan able to carry the lion's share of responsibility for its own security. Uh, a sovereign government at some point has to be able to be primarily responsible for the day-to-day -day security of the country. That's what we're trying to do through uh, training programs. I think we are making some progress. And, you know, the solution isn't, uh, and I've told people to be realistic, I mean, the, the, uh, the goal in Afghanistan, you know, is not that there will be no insurgency or the insurgency will be eradicated by 2011. I don't think that's realistic if you look at the history of Afghanistan, but that you will have a government that is able given that insurgency to nevertheless manage its day-to-day -day security. And so that's our goal. And uh, I, uh, you know, I don't think, uh, I don't really think there'll be much appetite among Canadians. I don't even think among the armed forces themselves, although they probably wouldn't say so much appetite to see rotations continuing the way they've been after six years. The idea that, that you were saying that we will be, if I understand, I, I don't want the words to come out, but 2011, tell me what happens with Canadian troops in Afghanistan. Well, uh, we're, uh, we're planning for our withdrawal of Canadian troops from Afghanistan in 2011. So you're saying we're, we're all gone by We've been very clear about that. Um, certainly the, the mission in Kandahar, as we've known it, um, I, you know, I, I don't want to say we won't have a single troop there because, you know, obviously we could aid in some technical capacities. but. At that point, the mission, you know, as we've known it, we intend to end it. And, you know, I think you have to put an end date on these things. And, and not just because I don't think the Canadian public will want to continue after that. I don't even think the Canadian military, although they won't admit it, would want to continue after that point. I think that we have to, you know, say to the government of Afghanistan, we have an expectation that you are going to be responsible for your own security. We're not there to permanently manage your security. We're there to assist you in building up your capacity to manage the security situation. And uh, that's, that's what we're working towards. Just... Now, that doesn't mean, as I said, we'll be completely absent from Afghanistan. And certainly, uh, you know, we've got important roles in development, reconstruction, and other technical assistance to the Afghan government. We've got to keep the thing on. You know, we've made a big investment. We can't see Afghanistan fall back to what it was. but. Um, you know, if we need the level of Canadian forces in Afghanistan in 2011, we need it throughout Afghanistan that we have today, we're not succeeding. Once their Afghan mission winds down sometime in 2011, certain members of the Canadian military are looking to take a much-deserved break. And by certain members, I mean all of them. Due to personnel and equipment shortages, Canada's Lieutenant General Andrew Leslie, an unusual name for a man, Leslie. Yes, told the Senate Defense Committee <laughs> last week, quote, we will have to explore the possibility of taking a short operational break that is synchronized of at least one year, meaning the Canadian military wants to take a breather to do some yoga, paint landscapes, run on the beach in gorgeous white capri pants. So a hiatus is needed to get their armored act together. Doug, I go to you first because this is a very important question. I want you to take it seriously. Isn't this the perfect time to invade this ridiculous country? They have no army. 
I didn't even know that they were in the war. I thought that's where you go if you don't want to fight. Exactly. Go, go chill in Canada. So exactly. I, I guess they'll have that'll be their tourism. Uh, you know, that'll be their selling point. We're not in the war for a year. <laughs> exactly. come, on, come on by while we nap. Exactly. exactly. Mr. Speaker, last week the Minister of Foreign Affairs told the House that there would be no request from the Americans to extend Canada's mission in Afghanistan. But yesterday, Hillary Clinton came to town and blew the government's cover. It's perfectly obvious the request had either been made or was just about to be made. It's perfectly obvious the government knew the request had either been made or was coming. So the question is simple, Mr. Speaker. Why did the Conservatives mislead Canadians last week? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I really don't know what the Leader of the Opposition is talking about. The government's position couldn't be clearer. Uh, whether we get asked about it this week or last week or next week, uh, we passed a motion in this Parliament in, in uh, 2008, and Canada's military mission will, in Afghanistan will end in 2011. The Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, today, this very day, the Government of Canada signed a G8 pledge to, quote, support Afghanistan on its road to peace and stability, unquote. So the question is, yes, okay, but the question, Mr. Speaker, is what in precise terms does that commit Canada do after 2011? Why won't the Prime Minister level with the Canadian people and with this House about the plans that this government has for the Canadian mission in Afghanistan after 2011. The uh, Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, um, Mr. Speaker, of course, not all of the, G of the G8 members have a military mission in Afghanistan. And Mr. Speaker, we've been very clear that Canada's military mission in Afghanistan will end in 2011, but we will continue with, of course, a, a mission on governance, on development, and on humanitarian assistance, and we welcome the input of the opposition into those deliberations. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Mr. 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 Speaker, Canadians have a better chance of getting the truth out of Hillary Clinton than this government. The Prime Minister said that there would be an end to the combat mission. Okay, but we still don't know the specific plans the government has for the mission after 2011. Will the Prime Minister commit to, to uh, disclosing these plans to Canadians and to uh, putting them, uh, availing them to us for a debate and a vote in this House? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the answer is the same. Uh, the answer w would be this was the same as last week uh, and uh, next week. Uh, the mission will be completed in 2011 in uh, Afghanistan in accordance with uh, a motion adopted here. Mr. Speaker, we continue. We will continue our involvement in development, uh, humanitarian assistance and governance, and we invite the opposition uh, to contribute their ideas uh, to that. Honorable Member. Uh, one of the things that we try and do as journalists is try and anticipate what the next big debate is going to be or what the next big issue is going to be. You know, I was just talking to Colin Robertson and Paul Workman down in Washington, our, our, our latest casualty in Afghanistan, right. a young fellow from the Princess Pats, and he was there mentoring the Afghan army. Now, this is a role that we say that we're going to do after combat operations are over in 2011. That's one of the, we're going to train the Afghan army. But we've just seen that if you train the Afghan army, our guys are still going to get killed. I mean, you know, at, at what point are we going to have a real debate about 2011? Yeah. Well, first of all, if you're in southern Afghanistan, the, tr the threat is very real and will still be there in 2011. They will be trying to attack and kill anybody from the international community there and Afghan security forces. And if you are in the middle of that dynamic, you are going to be into fighting. You simply cannot sit back into a base camp hide away and never move, but first of all, you cannot do any work, and secondly, you have now given the initiative completely to the Taliban who are trying to kill you, and as a result, the risk will be even higher. So I believe if you're in southern Afghanistan, you are going to be in combat operations, whether that is deliberately your role 
or simply a factor of the, uh, of the fact that you are there. Canadians have it in their minds that a 2011 pullout means that people aren't going to be dying in Afghanistan anymore. And it's going to take a very brave government and, and a political party to bring them face to face with the reality that a continued presence there means putting Canadians in harm's way. Earlier in the program, we told you about Prime Minister Stephen Harper's plans to extend Canada's mission in Afghanistan. And while it may be a political issue in Ottawa for some family members of soldiers killed in Afghanistan, it's very personal. Earlier today, Sandy Mellish, the mother of Warrant Officer Frank Mellish, spoke to CBC reporter Rob Gordon at her home in Truro, Nova Scotia. Here's some of what she had to say for the record. I want to say that I am so disappointed in Peter McKay and Stephen Harper and their decision to keep those troops in Afghanistan beyond the, the pullout date of 2011. He promised those families, those troops, those families, that they would be out of there. Yes, it's non-combat, but who is he kidding? Does he think they're not going to be hurt or killed or injured? Or, and those families are tired. They're tired of being home and, in the, and looking after their families while their spouses are away, tour after tour after tour. The troops are tired. How many politicians do as much for us as those troops are doing for this country? Good God, you know what it's about? It's about Peter McKay down there in Halifax, sipping with Condoleezza Rice and hobnosing with the Americans and do the American way. Well, you know what? We're Canada. We stand on our own two feet. That's what our soldiers are doing over there, standing on guard for us. Canada. Peter McKay, take a hint. It's time to bring these troops home. The troops are tired. They're tired out.